This is the new M1 based MacBook Air that I tested about a week ago. Now I had originally ordered this for my daughter for her school. Now as far as schoolwork is concerned, you've got Microsoft Office, you've got Teams, you've got Zoom, not necessarily the most demanding tasks. But when this thing came in and I tested it, I was honestly super impressed with its performance. It, battery life, benchmarks, everything, whatever I threw at it, it was comparable to my 16 inch MacBook Pro. So I realized, I thought, why not get a MacBook Pro for myself and you know, just change my 16 inch. However, I I've always had, not always, but recently I've had 16 gigs of RAM on my laptops. This thing with 8 gigs of RAM performs tremendously. What I did was I thought I'll compare the MacBook Pro, the 13 inch that Apple has released on M1 with 8 gigs and 16 gigs and find out if there's any difference between that. That's what we're doing in this video today. Hey everyone, this is Abbas from TechRadar and let's get started. All right, so we've got the eight gig version of the MacBook Pro on the left, which is in silver. And on the right, we have the space gray version, which is 16 gigs. Now, other than the RAM, there's also one other difference that we need to highlight, which is the SSD storage. So the one on the right with the 16 gigs is a review sample from Apple, and that has a two terabyte SSD. Whereas the one on the left, which is the one that I went and bought, the eight gig model has a 512 uh, GB SSD. So let's just kind of quickly check the speed on the hard drives. Now I am just uncompressing a zip file which is about 13 gigs in size um, and honestly speaking both of these look just about the same as far as speed is concerned of the drive. Um, I, th I think both of them are just fine so I don't think we're gonna see a huge impact as far as the speed of the drive is concerned. Nevertheless, we ran the benchmark from Blackmagic, which tests the disk speed. And again, the results were similar. The uh, 16 gig version with the 2TB drive was a tad bit faster in certain times the benchmark was performed, but not consistently faster. So moving on to actual apps, we're going to start with the Adobe Creative Suite. And the first app that we are going to start with is going to be Lightroom will launch Lightroom on both of them and uh, it looks like the 16 gig version does load it noticeably faster. Uh, the 8 gig version is loaded as well but we did see a little bit of difference. Now what we're going to do over here is we are going to open a 64 megabyte raw image file. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that. All right, so pretty much the same time, not much of a difference as far as loading the file is concerned. Uh, next, we played around a little bit with the white balance and exposure levels on both these machines. And again, they're pretty snappy. Both of them react pretty nicely. There is no stutter, there is no lag. I mean, both of them are performing quite well. So, you know, eight gigs launching Lightroom, running Lightroom seems fairly okay. And the last thing we're gonna do is export the JPEG file and it looks like both of them perform pretty much exactly the same. Now let's have a quick look at the activity monitor over here and right away you can see that the swap file usage on the 8 gig machine is a lot higher than it is on the 16 gig machine. All right, so next we're gonna switch to um, Photoshop. So let's go ahead and launch Photoshop. Now keep in mind that Lightroom is running in the background. Most of the time people working with these apps tend to leave them running in the background. So Photoshop loaded again faster on the 16 gig. Um, again, noticeably faster. You could see the difference between the two, uh, not by a whole lot, but as expected, 16 gigs is better than eight gigs. Let's come back to the activity monitor and have a look. So again, you can see the swap file on the eight gig is a lot higher. So, you know, it is what it is. Let's move on to After Effects next. Now, this is also a fairly heavy application. Let's see which one launches first. And again, 16 gigs launched a little bit faster. Uh, there is a slight difference, but I wouldn't necessarily call it night and day. I mean, it's just about the same. So in After Effects, we are just going to be opening a project. And then we are going to render it at 4K 60 FPS. It's an intro title, nothing very heavy, but um, you know, good enough to show us the difference. All right, so here we go. Let's see how fast rendering is on the 16 gig versus the 8 gig version. Both of them seem to be running similarly, though the 16 gig version, you can see it's pulling up ahead of the 8 gig version. Again, something expected, but something that we can actually see. Um, a lot of people were wondering what the difference between the 8 gig and 16 gig is. Well, here it is. 
Now keep in mind you have Photoshop and Lightroom both running in the background as well and we're done with it on the 16 gig version whereas the 8 gig version is now done as well. So slight difference between the two. The next test we have is Photoshop and we are opening a 1 gig PSD file now. So the 16 gig version of it loaded pretty fast. As you can see the 8 gig is struggling so we still have After Effects open in the background along with Lightroom. So we're really pushing the limits of RAM over here, but you can see a big difference here. I mean, the 8 gig version is struggling just to get the, the poster loaded, whereas it's just ready and waiting on the 16 gig version. So, you know, if you're dealing with heavy files, one gig files, especially in Photoshop and stuff like that, then just uh, the 16 gig version definitely seems to be the right way to go. All right, still waiting for the 8 gig version and we're finally there. So what we're gonna do over here is we are just going to take a little vector and add it to the poster um, and then just save this image. So let's go ahead and save that and see how that goes. So, well, both of them are performing quite okay. The 8 gig version was slightly slower, but not by a whole lot. Uh, now let's move back to the resource monitor. So you can see that again, the 8 gig swap file is using a lot on there. All right, so for the final one now, we are going to be launching Adobe Premiere, which is probably the hardest one, considering that we've already got After Effects, Photoshop, and Lightroom running in the background. So it's already loaded on the 16 gig version, whereas we just saw the splash screen on the 8 gig version. Uh, again, the 8 gig version is struggling with this. So let's just wait for it. All right, so there you go. We have it open now and let's go into resource activity monitor again and you can see the spike on on the resources on the swap file as well all right so what we're going to do over here is we will be importing 8k videos a um, little over a minute or so and then once we've done that we are going to be adding a title to it and then basically rendering it in h.264 so um, let's kind of get started on this and see how it goes so you can see that the 8GB version is getting very sluggish, even moving between menus is taking a lot of time. But uh, let's go ahead and actually render that. This took quite a while to render, but just to give you a little bit of idea that by the time that five of the six files were rendered on the 16 gig version, we only had two of the six files rendered on the 8 gig version. So you are really seeing the difference over here, not just necessarily by rendering, but also the system feels a lot sluggish with 8 gigs, moving between screens, switching to this activity monitor. You can see that you can have these stutters and, you know, if you look at the RAM graph now, you can see how it's being, you know, utilized quite a bit now. So the differences are very, very, very clear when you've got four Adobe applications open. Again, not something that everyone does, but from a professional user's point of view, you probably will have that many applications open at one time, whether you're rendering a graphic or whether you're rendering video. 16 gigs is definitely the way to go from that point. All right, so let's break those results down. Now, there wasn't anything super surprising on what we found out, but let's just quickly have a talk about that. Let's start with Final Cut. Now, while we didn't show this on the video, we actually ran 4K tests as well. What we did show you was the 8K. When it comes to 4K video, both these machines performed almost identical. There was not much difference. In fact, the MacBook Air with the 256GB SSD and one less GPU core performed exactly the same. So if you're working on 4K videos or you know just general office files, web browsing, etc., etc., the Air is a perfect choice. I don't think you really need to upgrade to the Pro. Now, coming to the Pro between 8 gigs and 16 gigs, let's talk about that. Coming to Final Cut first, when we loaded up 8K videos and we started rendering those, we started seeing the difference of it. There wasn't a huge difference, but there was a noticeable difference between the 8 gigs and the 16 gigs, where the 16 gigs finished rendering faster than the 8 gigs. But when we moved to Creative Cloud and Adobe's platform and we had multiple Adobe apps open at one time, just a quick note over here, we didn't use the ARM version of Photoshop because honestly, that's just crap. That's not very good. So we had After Effects, we had um, Premiere, we had Photoshop, we had Lightroom, all of these applications. And as we saw, as we kind of moved from one application to the other, the um, 8 gig version started to show its uh, weaknesses, which is fair point. I mean, the swap file got utilized a bit more and the system started getting a little slower. So if you are really working with multiple heavy applications, 
16 gigs is definitely the way to go. But if you're looking to do some light editing, whether it's photo or video editing, 4K high-res photos, or even just office work and stuff like that, I think 8 gigs is just perfectly fine for you. So that's it. If there are any other particular tests that you want us to run, please do let us know. This is Abbas from Tech Radar signing out, and please do subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay notified of all our new videos.